When the Holy Spirit moves, just like on the day of Pentecost, first He came as a wind. Then He came as a fire. Then He came as the wine. Passover, Pentecost, Tabernacles. I'm telling you, in this hour, God is going to pour out of His Spirit the new wine in such a way to offend our mind. You might as well just get ready. He offends our mind to expose our hearts. That's my experience. When He's done crazy things that offend your mind, it actually exposes what's in your heart. I mean, we find out right where you are real fast. People start getting drunk in the Holy Ghost and rolling around on the floor. People get offended in their minds. Maybe you don't say anything, but you get offended. Somebody stands up here and starts preaching about something that makes you uncomfortable. Says something that actually is an area that you're not being obedient in. <laughs> you get offended in your mind, but guess what? That's really exposing what's in your heart. God has to do that. He's got to get the junk out of us. Just like the dream Mar or the vision Marcia just said. He's got to get the junk out. He's got to get take the trash out. He's got to get our order. Those boxes, I mean, that's the man-made order. We've got things boxed up. We, we put God in boxes. We've got everything organized, neat. I mean, we, we've cleaned up. It looks good. But there's no life. God, Bob Jones, the main thing he said in the last days, he would tell every pastor, every leader, he said, you've got to come. I mean, people got offended at this. He said, you, when you come, you've got to come empty-headed. You've got to just get rid of yourself. Come empty and expect the Lord to fill you. doesn't mean you don't prepare and all those things, but you've got to be willing to chuck it all. If you've got a plan, to discard the plan for Him, for His hand, to do whatever He wants to do. He said you've got to come empty-headed. Stop trying to think that you've got to share all your wisdom and all your knowledge. Just show up empty-headed, open, just like that room. Lord, fill me. Shine. You enlighten me. You reveal to me. You fill me to overflow. We've got to start ministering out of the overflow. Out of the abundance. And guess what? That can only happen if you're filling yourself every day. Not when we come together. You've got to be full when you come together. You've got to be filling yourself every day with more of Him. Isaiah 48, 7 in the Amplified says, they are created now, called into being by the prophetic word. And not long ago, and before today, you have never heard of them, lest you should say, behold, I knew them. <laughs> Message Bible says this, is Isaiah 48, 7. This isn't a variation on the same old thing. This is new, brand new. Something you'd never guess or dream up. When you hear this, you won't be able to say, I knew that all along. This great outpouring, Bob Jones always called it a move of the Spirit. This great and last move of God is not about how much we know, but about how low we will go. How humble we will become before Him. The foundation... For authority has always been and always will be humility. Amen? Now, I've been sharing. We didn't get to meet last Sunday, but for the last couple weeks, I mean, it's like a reintroduction of the number 11. Everywhere I look, even yesterday, it was 11s, 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 11s. And we know that 11 is symbol represents transition. I've been hearing words transition. Last time I ministered was a Wednesday night in Christopher before all that snow and ice came. I preached, I kept hearing the word transition and transformation. 
transition and transformation. Paul Keith Davis had a new webinar and he released, he released a new word just this last week. Guess what he said? I watched the webinar Tuesday night. He said, 2014 is the year of transition and transformation. That was confirmation. I mean, how much closer can you get it? <laughs> we are in transition and through transformation. And that transformation is metamorphosis. It's just like the caterpillar turning into the butterfly. We may have been in a worm stage. We may look like a worm, but that's not what we are. What in us is coming forth, even though we've been through the cocoon season, the processing, the transformation, the transforming, we're going to come out a new species. It doesn't look anything like the old. Completely different in every way, even nature, characteristics, appearance. How many of you know a worm and a butterfly are about as opposite as you can get? The worm can't leave the ground and the butterfly never touches the ground. One looks ugly. One is beautiful. One can fly. Hmm. Transition. I told you transition means going from incomplete to complete. We're in transition. Going from imperfect to perfect. Going from, in God's eyes, disorder, which is exactly what the church is in, disorder, into order. Going from unfulfilled. How many of you feel unfulfilled? Got some dreams, promises, prophetic words, visions, desires, scriptures that are unfulfilled. God said it, that settles it, but I haven't seen it yet. Unfulfilled to fulfilled. God's got to fulfill it. Every word has to be fulfilled. We are the last church age. There isn't another one coming. We are the last generation. I believe that. There's not another one coming before Christ comes. We're it. I'm telling you, God's going to do more in the last day than He's done in all the former days. The latter rain is greater than the former. This last outpouring or move of God is not going to be based on our abilities. It's not going to be hinged or rely upon our even our abilities or understanding. He is going to come so great that we can't miss it. The only thing we have to do is surrender to it. Be submitted to it. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and He will exalt you in due time. We've got to be transformed. We are not where we need to be to do what we need to do. How many of you know that? The worm had to be transformed in order to do what the butterfly was called to do. Couldn't do it in the state that it was in. I'm telling you, I see this transformation, and I touched on this last time I preached. There's got to be transformation not only in the spirit. We can't camp at Passover. We can't camp and be satisfied with just salvation. We can't. Transformation of the spirit is great, and it's the first step, but it's the door. It's the doorway in to the rest. It's the first step, not the last. Salvation is good, but don't close the door. Don't set your feet in concrete. Don't sit down in your rocking chair and stay there. It's the first step. Transformation of our spirit. Being born again. But then there's this transformation that's got to take place in the soul. We've got to go from 30-fold to 60-fold. From Passover to Pentecost. And I'm telling you, for all of my church life, that's where we've been. We're in the transformation of the soul. Our mind, our will, our emotions. 
Transform me to stop thinking like a worm, like a bug, and start thinking like a caterpillar, or a butterfly, like an eagle. I'm not just a blackbird. I'm not just a sparrow. I'm not just whatever. We are eagles. We've got that prophetic word. I am an eagle and so are you. We are butterflies created to float, created to flow, created to fly with Him. Transformation of the soul. You start thinking differently. This is where the church has been for at least the last 30 years. Maybe longer. That's where I've been for the last 30 years. Transforming my soul man. The way I think. The way I think. My thought life. The way I see myself. The way I see Him. The way I think about me. The way I think about Him. The way I think about you. The way I see the church. You will never really know who you are until you really know who He is. The church, for the most part, we've painted a caricature picture of who Jesus Christ is. We've made Him who we want Him to be. Instead of letting Him make us what He wants us to be. God has begun transforming the church from being just a fixture of men into fishers of men again. See, we've made it about the messenger about the man, put him on a pedestal. When Jesus said, I am lifted up. When I am lifted up, I'll do what? Draw all men. Paul came, one of the greatest prophetic voices the last generation, said the church without mixture will have the spirit without measure. I'm talking about going through transformation. And our soul has to be transformed. Our soul has to become servant to our spirit. We can't be led by the soul any longer. We've got to be led by the spirit. We have got to be. You have got to stop living by your mind, your will, your emotions, what you think, your understanding. And you've got to get over here in His spirit. You've got to step over into the spirit. And the spirit man has to lead. The spirit man has to give the command. And the soul has to bow its knee to your spirit. Amen. Proverbs 23.7 says, For as a man what? Thinketh in his what? Heart. So is he. That word thinketh, I've preached this before. I'm just going to touch on it real quick here. The word thinketh, as you think, act as a gatekeeper. It means to open the door. As you open the door. See, you've got the choice. The soul man has to open the door to the spirit man and let him come in and lead. The soul has to take a back seat to the spirit now. I'm telling you, when you're led by the soul, it produces slaves. When you're led by the spirit, it produces sons. The church has been living in Egypt as slaves because we've been dependent upon the soul realm. The soul. The thoughts, intents, thoughts, mind of man. Ideas of men. We've followed traditions of men. Theologies of men. Ruts of men. We would rather follow a man than follow him because it's easier. Humble yourself. Let him take over. As a man thinketh, acts as a gatekeeper, a door opener. To what? The heart. That word means the mind. I'm talking about the soul. It means the appetite. As a man opens up his appetite. It means desire. It means self-life. We act as a gatekeeper to our soul. So is He. That word so is very important. S-O. It means to set upright, to make just, or to be established. As a man opens his 
mind, appetite, desire, self. It causes those things that you have opened yourself up to to be established in your life. 